で最,最初からちょっと上げときゃ全上げはせんでいいけどちょっと上げといた方がいいでもまたその踏切まで行ったらまた下がる、うん、また上げなきゃいけないでしょうんうんうんそうそう、まあ、踏切はもう全,全部上げうんうんできてるもう鍵は刺さってるからはい I didn't want to take the video inside the company, but just as Mr. Shimada said, we had to raise the suspension because of this hill. We have to get out from here. Just give me a second. Okay, and there will be uh, the railway. We will have to pass through the railway where the uh, trains are passing. And it's quite an uneven ground. So with the tracks like this one, customized with the arrow uh, on the sides and uh, you know, they are lowered and they have some underbars and some attachments. Uh, that make them closer to the ground. We have to raise the suspension quite a bit. Okay, here we are. Let's raise the front and the back of the truck as much as possible. And really with trucks like this, you have to think about the truck the most. You need to, you know, if you have to stop and raise the suspension, you have to stop and raise the suspension and do not care about other people too much. Okay, two days have passed and the truck is now ready to go to the client. There are some final touches being made, it's being polished and we are making sure everything is top notch. Tomorrow at 3 a.m. I will get from here, start from here and go to Saitama Prefecture. So, see you in the morning. Good morning guys, it's 3 a.m. and we start our drive about 600 kilometers to go. In 300 meters, turn right. It looks cool, doesn't it? The Scania logo and the plate on the roof. It's quite European. Style right. thing. It 
also the number plate has all the digits and the letters blinking I mean it has an LED plate underneath the number plate and the number plate is made in such a way that you can see through on the letters and on the digits on the numbers it's actually an option at the uh, uh, transport office where you get the number plate if you pay like yeah, it's like a hundred bucks in, in US dollars I guess and you can get the that kind of number plates but then I think you have to buy the plate behind it the, the one that shines separately so yeah it, it costs a little bit more but in a track like this or in the modern somehow uh, customized cars also it's it's a nice touch especially at night it looks kind of cool and futuristic I guess and today also at first we are going to the transport office transport bureau I don't know how you call it in English uh, well the place where you register the vehicles and you get your number plates and this kind of stuff we first have to go there and change the owner of the truck to the client and after we do that uh, we will take the truck to the client trucks on the Japanese highways at night from what I've heard it's that most of the truckers in Japan actually drive at night and they sleep in the daytime and they also load the goods at, in the daytime and it's quite a tough life from what I'm hearing I myself have never been a truck driver in uh, in Japan never carried any goods for a living but from what I hear it's really really hard I mean they have to load all the goods themselves not not like in Europe where you just park at the gate and the forklift driver from the warehouse puts everything into the truck and you just close the doors or uh, well, sometimes you have to put the lashing straps on but that's that's basically it and here they load everything themselves and they only earn money when they drive so it sometimes takes like five hours to just load the goods and they are not being paid for it in most cases and the goods are often not on the pallets but it's just a box by a box they have to put it in with their hands and then unload it at the next location yeah and you drive at night and you sleep in the daytime and it's really hot in Japan so and the tracks are quite narrow it's not like this Scania you have the, the beds are more narrow and sometimes the bed is on the top not not behind the seats but over the seats so there is quite a lot of drivers in the hurry driving a little like crazy uh, but I don't want to judge them because the environment well pretty much forces you to do these actions
listening to the navigation <laughs> and there is one road on the top the highway and there is one up to here there was one road on the bottom under the highway so I didn't really know which one does the Google mean and I went straight and now I have to make a u-turn and go back Jesus this is the hardest country to drive I've been to I've been driving in India in Thailand and there it's also crazy but there is just no rules so you go like you want and the big one is has the priority has is can go first but here there are a lot of rules and it's even harder to understand Yutanro Ari It means that we can make a U-turn here and actually this is what this route is for which just saved my ass now and this is also a different route than this one and if you look at the navigation it sometimes thinks that you are on the other one and tells you to keep going or to get off or I mean it's it's hard to understand I mean if you live here since you were born you are probably used to it and somehow know how to interpret the signs and you know everything here do you see what I mean there is a highway right above our head Thank <laughs> you. 